Welcome to the Branding 101 video from Studio Tonic, how to build an effective brief from your client. So good branding happens when good strategy meets good design. Good strategy is the ideal outcome from any brief. Now, to truly create some kind of compelling, engaging design that really reflects your client's business, you need to understand what their strategy is and how design can help to elevate that. Ultimately, people don't buy what it is you do, they buy why you do it. Branding creates an emotional connection that transcends the product or service that your client is selling. It's your job as a designer to build that emotional connection through visual design, through tone of voice, um, and to really understand how the client's business works, their audience, their values, what they want to look and feel and sound like as well, in order to build something that can really connect with consumers and ultimately drive them to buy. So it's your job to take your client through the briefing process. Sadly, unsurprisingly, you will never or very, very rarely be delivered a perfectly wrapped creative brief that ticks every single box that you need. Now, because we're all individuals, we all work in different ways, it's almost impossible to get that perfect brief. So you need to be really clear on your own process and you need to help your clients understand how you work, the kind of information that you need from them and to then turn that into something that is a really powerful response that answers and addresses how their business works and what they want to achieve. The key to this starting out is to be prepared. Make sure that you love your process. I encourage you to look through Google, look through YouTube, all the you know, design inspiration sites. There are hundreds of articles out there about how to you know, create a brand, how tone of voice works, uh, how to create a compelling look and feel, all of this kind of stuff. This video isn't going to teach you that. This is much more of an overview of how we do things at Studio Tonic. It won't be going into huge detail in all of these sections. Um, and the reason for that is that it's important for you to go out, do the research, understand how these processes work and how you can apply it to your own workflow. So once you love that process, make sure that you write it down in a really, really clear, easy to scan document. I use Google Docs. I've got all of my questions set out as different title headings so I can easily flick between them and make sure that you know this backwards and forwards as you have what will inevitably be a bit of a free ranging conversation. Your client is likely to answer the questions that may be further down the document or maybe even ones that you haven't thought to ask. So you need to be able to navigate through your document, hold those answers in mind while they're still talking and put them in the right place so that when you come back later to review it, you're not left with a complete mess of garbled nonsense that you can't understand yourself, even though you wrote it. So that is the preparing in a digital sense. From a mental point of view, I like to go through, practice those questions the night before, make sure you've had your coffee, you've had your water, you've done your yoga, your room's nice and clean, wherever you're doing your call from or whether you're doing it in person, make sure that you're psychologically ready. You are the professional, your client is looking to you to be a professional, and you also have the benefit of the doubt. You know, you're going in there, you're having this meeting with them. They're already in the mindset that you know what you're talking about. So try not to get too flustered, take things slowly, love that process and just work through it and it will work. The important thing about processes and the same here, it's constantly being refined and that's really important. There's no one size fits all for every single client, every single job, every designer, every brand strategist, whatever it may be. So keep that in mind, make sure you're always refining your process, make sure you love it, make sure it works for you. So the first thing that I like to do is just to get an essence of the company. So this is kind of an overview of the DNA of the company. You know, what is it? What do they do? How many people work there? You can get a vibe even just from the person that you're talking to. You know, what's it like to work there? That kind of thing. So you begin to understand the company and how it operates. The next thing you want to look for is what do they stand for? So this will eventually be fleshed out into brand values. This may be something that they already have. Um, the importance of this is that it will give you an insight into how they operate and how they are in the world, how they communicate and interact with their customers, how they want to be perceived. So finding this out is really key because that can help to guide your decisions 
further down the line, whether it be tone of voice or language or design, um, even down to, you know, kind of interactions and micro animations on a website. So if you can reflect what your customer stands for to their customers, then you start to build that emotional connection that will help to connect the customers and to lead, hopefully, to more purchases through your design. So a really important next stage is the what, why, and how. So this is something called the golden circle, and you can look that up, and I encourage you to do so. But essentially, this is something that all, some, or few companies have. So what is what every company has? That is, what do they do? So everyone knows what they do, how they do it, fewer companies have. So this is how they like to operate. You know, how do they present themselves to customers? How do they talk? What level of service? What kind of service do they present? Even fewer customers still know why they do it. Or, you know, certainly in a more kind of prosaic sense, why do they exist? What is it that they're solving for their customers? And this is what you want to get to. You want to get to the why of the company. And this is what all of your briefing process should be leading towards because within that why you will find some kind of universal truth or some kind of insight that can spark a really unique and really connected idea for design that will hopefully lead you to a really solid brand. Next off you want to establish your customers business objectives. So you know they may be coming to you for a redesign for a new website, uh, rebranding, Whatever it may be, if you can understand where they want their business to go, then you can design with that in mind. Um, you know, if they're looking to grow or expand, you know, perhaps you need to make sure that your brand design is, you know, really, really flexible and it can apply across different continents, across different languages. Make sure that your font choices have different languages available, for example. It may be that they're looking to shift away from a certain type of audience and move to a different segment, which again, you know, that will influence your design decisions. That leads you straight on to understanding their audience. Now, hopefully most companies will have a good idea of who their audience is. They may even have some market research. This is a really good point to ask if they do have anything like that. They may have demographic information. They may have customer information. Uh, that they can share with you that could be really insightful. Um, because when you understand what motivates their customers what, and what they respond to, how old they are, where they live, what other kinds of brands they interact with or products they buy, that means that you can start to work your magic in a direction that is already going to be engaging for those customers. The next thing to ask is how do they actually want to look, feel and sound to customers? So this isn't about asking what color they want or, you know, do they like Comic Sans or not? This is essentially asking, you know, if your brand or your website was a shop, you know, even if they have a shop, you know, this is still relevant. Um, you know, what would it feel like? What would it sound like? What would it feel like? How would the customers be served? You know, do they want to come across as, you know, professional and clean and contemporary or do they want to feel maximalist and really cozy and welcoming so this is a really important thing to dig out because that again that will push your design into a direction early on that you know is along the right lines that is going to fit in with their business their objectives and their audience the next thing i like to ask especially of myself is it, is this an evolution or a revolution a lot of companies, when they come to us and they look for a rebrand, um, you know, it can be quite a lot for them to take on board that you know perhaps everything might be thrown out the window. So I'm very conscious to make sure that you know I don't throw things out just for the sake of it. You know, we can take colours and we can adapt them. We can work with the existing fonts. We can work with an existing logo. But where things might need to be changed or might have to be changed, you know, maybe something isn't digital friendly, maybe it doesn't work on mobile size, maybe the colour contrast isn't right, um, maybe they need an additional colour or some background graphics created to help lift and elevate things. Um, you know, is this about taking what's already there, adapting it, making it better, adding things, subtracting things to evolve it? Or is it about going, look, we've got a logo that we don't like, we've completely changed the business direction, we need to start again. So that is a really 
important thing to establish early on with your client is it's an evolution or a revolution. Because if you go down one route or the other without establishing this first, you could find yourself in hot water and just doing way too much work that you don't need to do. The last piece of the puzzle is when you've gone through all of this stuff and you've gone through this discovery process with your client and all of, this, all of the relevant stakeholders is to make sure that you take the time to analyze and review everything. When I have multiple stakeholders, I go through the exact same discovery process with all of them. And then I like to pull it into a presentation where I put all of the relevant sections together. I combine similar viewpoints. I pull out differing viewpoints. And then you can compare them against the business objectives. You can compare them against the values. You can compare them against the audience, you know, whether the audience is growing or changing. Um, because then that puts that information into context. And then when that review is done, um, and I encourage you to do that with your clients as well, um, you know, this may be a step that if you're, you know, if you're doing something for quite a small budget, you could cut out. But I do think it's a really important thing to do. It shows you're working to the client. It shows that you've understood them. It shows that you're engaged in their business. It shows that you are professional and you know where you're going before you get into design. Because design can become very subjective. So agreeing on those business objectives, agreeing on the direction at this early point before you start any creative work is really, really important. And then it means that you can start your work in the confidence that you are doing what they need. They have agreed that with you already. Um, you're clear on what they're going to be expecting. Um, and then you can start designing and then you can move straight into that full creative discovery process um, and then review from there. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, if there's any more detail you'd like to know about branding, please let me know in the comments. Please let me know if there's any other segments of branding or brand design that you'd like to know about and we can do a video for that as well. Um, hope you have a great day and thank you for watching.